thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. We'll take this another time because today I don't really want to get into that but it's just important that you understand. When you read this narrative, you find God speaking to Abraham saying thee, 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 six times he's, 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 he's personalizing it. I will bless thee. I will do this to thee, to thee. And then he uses I, I four times. So you have God saying I, I, I four times in this narrative and speaking to Abraham six times thee, thee. If you put it together, it comes to ten. You put six and four together in our nation today, it comes to what? Ten. Because we're 64. So we can say, there is God six, um, saying to Abraham six times, and there's God saying to himself, or calling himself, I, I, four times, and we put it together, it's ten. So it's not a coincidence. This is a very, 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 very auspicious year for us. It's not over yet. Because there's always that word suddenly. Remember what I said? We shared last Sunday. Afno, the Greek word, is pronounced A F N O, but the spelling is A P H O, actually. Af, A P H N O. Sudden. What you didn't imagine, what you didn't plan, just happens. And I know that there are many people who think Nigeria is finished. They don't know what God's, plan, God's plans are. There will be a sudden, a sudden intervention. It's going to happen. There's no doubt about it. See? So, but, but, but you see what he said to him. To, for, 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 for you to enter into the new, you've got to get out of the old. Do you understand? He said, get out of your country. I'm going to show you something else. And, and he said, get out of your country, get out of your kindred, get away from your kindred, get away from your father's house. When you look at the scriptures and you look at the context, it's very simple. You've got to get out of your country to get into the old country, into the new. We've been talking about the new Nigeria, but there are so many people who are still living in the old Nigeria. You've got to enter into the new Nigeria by faith first before it becomes a reality. So you've, you've, your vision should not be in the old shouldn't be there it should be in the new get away from the mindset of the old nigeria all of those whims and caprices the culture the traditions of the old that have kept us bound get away from and then enter into the new and it says i will show it to you that's what he said unto a land that i will show you Everything that we are seeing today is not God showing us. It's what the economy is showing us. It's what the politicians are showing us. It's what ethnicity is showing us. All those things. That's not what God said. He said, I will show it to you. So if you're keeping your vision on the things that God didn't show you, you are going to stay in that kind of quagmire. You'll be in the quandary. A conundrum that nobody can answer. But if you get away from that by faith and then you apprehend what God is showing you, then it becomes a reality. But listen to the general you know, conversation. It's always about how Nigeria is, Nigeria is this, Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is that, Tinubu is this, uh, PDP is that. It's all the old, old things that they are still talking about. That's where they are focused. When God is telling you, get away from that, I got something else to show you. I have something that I have prepared for you. But if you stay in that mindset and you stay in that location, you're not ever going to see it. And if you don't see it, it will not manifest. You got to see the kingdom of God first before you enter there. Except the man be born again, he can't see it. Get away from your kindred. That's ethnicity. Get away from your father's house. That's religion. Your father doesn't determine your house. God determines the house. You see, every household is, de is determined, or the operation of every household is determined by the leader of that, or the head of that household. And the head of that household submits to whatever authority that they have religiously. If it's a Muslim, it's going to act like a Muslim. If it's a Christian, it's going to act like a Christian. If it's a Buddhist, 
So your father's house is your religion. Are you still here? So you have the two of them playing here. Ethnicity, your people, your tribe is what I mean. They are your kindred. They are your tribesmen. And as long as you stay in that place, you never see the new thing that God has for you. Religion at least I've talked about this so much, I can even quote the things I said. We must rise above the pastures of religion. We must rise above the mosaic of ethnicity to an altitude where these cleavages diminish into mere superficial lacerations in the terrain of national integration. That's exactly how I said it. When you quote what you say in the language that you quote, it is called ipsissima verba. Ipsissima. You know, you can have verbatim when you quote something, but when you quote it in exact language and the same words that, that you speak it is called ipsissima verba. That's what I just did. But it's the truth. If, unless we get away from these thoughts and imagination, and thoughts have power. They do. Attitudes are thoughts that control what you do. See? So, and so God is saying, if you, if you do that first, if you notice, he said, Abraham, if you do this first, then I will do the next. It's not God who initiates it. It's Abraham. And so many people are calling on God, 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 but you are not doing what you're supposed to do first. In this equation here, Abraham begins it. When Abraham had done what God said, then God said, I will make of you a great nation. He didn't say, I'm going to get, bring another nation that he said that, remember I told you the word there is Asa, to create from already existing material. I will use what you already have to bring what you don't have, to create what you don't have. We call it phoenixism. You use the old things and the structures of your old company and then you now use it to build a new company that now emerges. It's from that bird that is called the phoenix. This, this imaginary thing that they talk about, you know, that the, when the phoenix dies, it rises from its ashes and all of that. It's called phoenixism. That Nigeria will embrace economic and political phoenixism as we rise from the ashes of the, the doldrums of our convoluted, you know, realities. See? He said, I will, I will. In other words, there's got to be the trust factor. If God is the one going to make Nigeria great, then stop blaming all these people. Now, I'm not saying they shouldn't be held responsible for what they do. That's, they must know the difference. But I'm saying stop putting your hope in these people. Stop thinking that there's something they can do for you because there's nothing they can do. They are incapacitated ab initio. There is nobody in the political system today that can do anything. Take, put anybody there. Take, go and bring Obi, go and bring Atiku, go and bring Obasanjoba, go and bring Jonathan back. There's nothing they can do. The system it, it's just not workable. This presidential system of governance can never save Nigeria. Never, no matter what you say. See? So, but I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that we should, we should resort to what you call quietism, where we don't say anything, and we just sit down one place in some political quietism. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we need to understand that while we hold our leaders responsible, we must understand that to forge a new Nigeria is going to take an act of almighty God, working in the hearts of Nigerians in a partnership, in a symbiotic relationship that will enable each person to contribute what they need to do as the raw materials for which God can now use to crystallize a new nation for us. That's what I've been talking about. That's what Aboriginal democracy is all about. That's what it is. See? It's a change of the system. That's what it is. And if you don't understand that, 
then you can you will you will you be you just be going round and round, parambulating in the wilderness of retrogression. It's a vicious circle. There's nothing you can do. It's not a PDP problem. It's not a. It's not a. Um, L, it's not an LP problem. It's not. It's not APC. They are right there in the quagmire of the political emporium, and there's nothing they can do. Do you know how many interests are involved? In the Senate alone, do you know how many interests that are involved? Then you go to the House of Assembly, then you go to the local, the, the gubernatorial, it's all. It's convoluted. It's a labyrinth. There's no way Nigeria can succeed at this pace. It's absolutely impossible. It's impossible. Unless God steps in to work with us, because it's not something he has to do alone. You know, like in salvation, God does it by himself. He's the one who brings the regeneration and all of that. We just, you know, he makes us, the faith that we exercise is given to us. So he's responsible, completely and totally responsible for that which we become. But in politics, it requires you. In theology, it's called monogistic. That means God alone does everything to get you saved. But in politics, it's not so. You, from what I'm reading here, you have to do A, B, C. Not just one thing, no. A, B, C. Three things he said to him. Get the out of your country. Get away from your, from your father's house. Get away from your kindred. And then let me show you. If, now, if I'm going to show you something, it means you got to walk with me to, to the place where I'm going to... Okay, here is the place. So what we must do now is to begin to prepare for a new Nigeria because we know it, that God is with us on it. It's not blaming these people and getting angry and just abusing people and disrespecting authority. That's not how it works. You have to start preparing for a journey which begins with you. And you get away from those old concepts and those moribund principles that are fossilized, that have, that have kept us where we are and begin to think different. And don't be drawn by the vortex of social media into that quandary. Where there's nothing good that can come out of Nigeria. Nothing is going to ever happen. As long as you have that mental set, mindset, that's all you're going to see. But we must begin to rejoice that our redemption draws nigh. And that God has entered into Nigeria and now we are walking with him. And so when people hear us speak, we speak the language of faith. Just like I was saying here. Maybe some of you didn't hear what I said. I said these are perilous times. What I just said, you, will see, you hear it on TV. It's going to be shown on television on Tuesday. All the networks, you can check. That's why we did it today because Independence Day is on the, is on the, on Tuesday, you know, on the 1st of October. But we're already 64 anyway. I said that these are perilous times. See? A dangerous time, but our faith in God must become the gyrostat which keeps us afloat as we navigate these tempestuous waters of our convoluted reality. Nigeria is a client nation, it has a divine destiny, a prophetic destiny, and because of that. The sovereign superintendence of Almighty God over Nigeria is assured because we know that God has a hand here and you cannot destroy this place, no matter who you are. So Nigeria is strong. Nigeria will survive. So hope on, hope ever. Hope on, hope ever. That's the attitude the church should have. Because we are seeing something that the world is not seeing. God is showing us something. 
He's showing us. He showed me this in 1999. That's why it's, I can tell you that Nigeria will be here because without a vision, the people perish. If you're seeing the wrong vision, you are just going to keep getting into the same language with the people you become, you know, all you hear people talk about is the diatribe of politics. And they saw this and they saw that and they saw that and they, and they gratify their, 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 their carnal mentality. And they think that's how Nigeria is going to change by insulting Tinubu or insulting that person or ridiculing that person or, or doing that. That's not going to change anything. It's not going to work. If you want it to work, then do what he says. Get away from those things. Get away from that philosophical posture. The psychological you know, position that you have taken. Because these people cannot give you a new nation. They cannot. The one who can has said it here. I will make of you, not just a new, a great, great. So we, you look at the potential that Nigeria has and we are so far below the kind of expectation and the potential that we have. And the Lord has shown us, as we celebrate 64 years, remember what I'm telling you. Because if you don't follow the principles of scripture, you will see nothing from God. Get away and I will show you something that you desire. It is in that place, he said, I will bless you. I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee you and you know if he's talking to abraham he's talking to you you are the seed yes. of abraham yes. if he's talking to abraham he's talking to you yes. and i will bless you and make your name great did you notice here he didn't say i'll give you money again he said i will make your name because in the world that we live today, it's the name that determines the power. If I say Putin, it's just a name, but it conjures all of the power of Russia. See? Just like the name of Jesus. The Bible doesn't say, and so at the name of Jesus, I'll, I'll give you, I'll put riches and money. Just to give you a name that will invoke everything else. I'll make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Nigeria is going to be a blessing to all the nations of this world. I know that for sure. Because I already have seen it. So when I see all of this stuff going on, and I see the vacillations of, of political actors. And I see their prevarication and their political jugglery and all of the stuff that they demonstrate as they go wrong from pillar to post in seeking political you know, relevance. I'm amused because I'm seeing something much greater. I've seen something else. See, at the time that Moses went to the top of the mountain, Israel hadn't entered the promised land yet. But he saw it. He saw it. Now for you to see that, he had to elevate. You can't see what is ahead of you at this altitude. You've got to elevate. You've got to levitate. For him to see the promised land before these guys, God took him to a mountain top, away from the carnal visions of that congregation. And that's what I'm saying. What gives us the joy and the strength to go from day to day is because there is something that we have seen. There's a vision that God has shown to us. And it's just a matter of time. When a woman is pregnant, and she recognizes that she's pregnant, she starts to see something. A vision is before her, which 
enables her to go through all of the trauma, the difficulties as her stomach begins to distend and all of the difficulties that she experiences. She's looking forward to the end of it all. When that child will come forth. So I want to say to you, don't worry about what you're seeing now in the terrestrial kind of world. The one with whom we have to do has told us there is something else that is in the offing. There is a new Nigeria right ahead of us. And only those who have that kind of vision will see it. And when you see it, it strengthens you. The Bible says Jesus because of what he saw endure the cross. He despised the shame, but he saw something ahead. So, I know what's going on. I know the difficulties. I know the cost of food stuff. I know, I know all of those things. But I know something greater than those things. The word of Almighty God concerning this nation. I was in Form 1 in Edo College when I heard and the Lord made me hear it because they came and took all of us to this fellowship and the only thing I heard because they were preaching and all that, I didn't hear I can't remember a single word of what they said other than this God has a plan for Nigeria we're talking about 1971 that's what I heard when I left that place what what I took with me was God has a plan for Nigeria I didn't know what it meant that's all I heard. That's all I remember. Because he wanted me to hear it as far back as that time. And he stayed with me. So, be encouraged. When man comes to the end of himself, God comes to the beginning of himself. We've come to the place where we recognize that there's no political philosophy there is no political arrangement that can salvage Nigeria in the present circumstances there's nothing you can do whether you borrow money or you don't borrow money whether you use the money or you don't use the money that's now I'm not saying you shouldn't use your money judiciously or that government should be allowed to demonstrate a level of profligacy that is diametrically opposed uh, to good governance that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying that these attempts cannot save our nation the corruption the rot that is in the system is beyond your wildest imagination the putridity the putrefaction that emanates from governance years of, of accumulation of draconian leadership it's not something you can undo nobody can only God can and he will so, we want to show him that we believe him, that we trust in him, that Pharaoh will not keep us any longer, that he must let God's people go. And when I speak Pharaoh, I'm talking about the devil himself because he's the one who incapacitates you and who isolates you and puts you in solitary confinement. Everything that has happened to Nigeria has come through the devil, of course he has his agents, but he is the brain behind it. So, what we're going to do, like I said, we we'll start with January. You hold the Nigerian flag when you come, you guys stand here, then you thank God for our nation, and then you, whatever request you want to make, he is here. He 